I was born to two unbelieving parents, and my mom had had a lot of trouble in her life, was, had a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on in her childhood that was really bad. And uh, so um, she had a couple of marriages, married my dad, and uh, everything was great until my mom got saved. And it kind of uh, ended up in my parents divorcing when I was about five or six, and which caused a lot of emotional turmoil in me. And uh, my mom, um, kept bringing me to church and right around six that age I, got, I went forward and accepted Christ and I still have the Bible she presented me with and I, I read that Bible from the time I could read until I mean till I was in my teens and uh, but my concept of God back then was sort of the resident cosmic policeman you know the sort of bad tempered um, irritable but distant but loved me but was not pleased with the way I acted and so that's what I grew up with. I grew up under that sort of legalistic concept of who God was, which is completely false to his true nature. And, and uh, so at about the age of um, 11 or 12, I got really into music. I heard bluegrass music uh, on television. I, lived, we grew, I grew up in California. I heard bluegrass music and, and then wanted a banjo and a guitar. And I began playing banjo and guitar and so it gave me a sense of validation because my childhood had given me a sense of low self-worth and, and, and sort of insecurity and nightmares and all kinds of stuff. This gave me a sense of, oh, I, I am valuable for something. And so while I had Christianity going on one track, on this parallel track, my real, sort of, my real sense of identity was coming from music. And I was being fed by that. Um, and of course, as you will see, the only problem with that is, is anything in our identity that is centered in the world is a fluctuating source. It goes up and down and up and down. And so in the mid-90s, I went through a, a very uh, dark and deep uh, psychological crash. And so what happened uh, through that crash, I remembered an, an Annabelle Gilham book that my wife had had up at her parents' place, and I was thumbing through it one day. It was called A Woman's Strength. And I thumbed through it, you know, idly, and I saw these identity verses, and this was several years before the crash. And, and I read, you know, I'm a king, I'm a priest, I'm holy, I'm accepted in the beloved. Oh, aren't those nice things? Isn't that great? But you really don't grasp those things until you really need them. And, and when I really needed them in that deep, dark place, that's where I went to. I, I remember those verses and I began to search out the scripture and find out, a, that, find out what God says about me and find out um, how he defines reality and he, how, how he defines me. And that's really what restructured my self-concept. And I had people, as I came from this one side of, of the crash, pre-crash, I was one kind of person. I was very introverted. I was never... I was never uh, comfortable unless I had an instrument. At a party, if I was playing, I was comfortable. If I didn't, I was uncomfortable, didn't really want to talk to people. After this crash and restructuring of my self-concept, I became not an extrovert, but very talkative and gregarious and totally willing to share my story. And um, anyway, that restructuring um, ended up completely changing, changing my life because, because the only way to get through life is to define reality as God defines it. And that's all faith is, is to say, this is what God says reality is. And then you look around at the circumstance that looks like it's completely not true what God says. And you say, I don't care what the circumstance is, God says this is true. And that's where you step out in faith and you begin acting.